the year was 2006. My father had saved up enough to buy my family what would turn out to be the single most important investment, a personal computer. Remember those? And it got even better. I had an internet connection. With a blistering speed of 512 kbps and a download limit of a whopping 1 GB, anything was possible. I was ecstatic. Now, having a PC led to my love affair with Fruity Loops version 1, a digital audio workstation that allowed me to create beats from scratch using stock sounds found within the software. And Tractor DJ version 1 was a DJ software that let me mix two different tracks at once. Now, this was completely new territory for me, as I have no formal training in music whatsoever. So if you ask me to play Happy Birthday on the keys, I'd really struggle. But I vividly remember sitting in my bedroom for over 18 hours straight and maybe 37 attempts in, I was finally able to produce my first ever mashup, which is a fusion of two different tracks of two different genres. Now, this session stretched right into the next afternoon, and I had no dearth of energy. I had made something out of nothing, right from the comfort of my own bedroom with what I had. I was completely addicted to the process of arranging a whole bunch of different sounds in a sequence to make one cohesive beat. I was absolutely hyped about the fact that I was able to translate my ideas right onto the screen. Now, there is a common misconception about what electronic music is. And for the most part, people associate that with loud party music. And that couldn't be further from the truth. We have legendary pop icons such as David Bowie, Duran Duran, Depeche Mode, Kraftwerk, Madonna, and Bappi Lahiri, who've used electronic music excessively in their body of work. And that goes for famed German film composer Hans Zimmer as well, who is notable for incorporating electronic sounds into his orchestral compositions. Now, speaking of music icons, let me ask you this. How many of you have chanted along with a sea of people at a packed concert? Raise of hands. Awesome. And how many of you have felt connected with a room full of people when you found yourself dancing along to the same beat? Amazing. So, what does that tell you? There is something about music that brings people together. It's everywhere around us. It's inherent. Our bodies readily react to music, which makes music the single greatest unifier that has ever existed. So when you find yourself, if you've ever experienced the feeling of ecstasy when listening to Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin, or have bonded with someone over the Beatles, R.D. Berman, Elay Raja, then those are the same hormones at work that are responsible for generating the feelings of happiness and trust. Music unites people. Now, I've seen this happen all at once when performing in front of a packed crowd at a club. You and I don't necessarily have to know each other, but for that brief moment, we're all connected, regardless of who we are, where we're from, or what we look like. Age, gender, sexual orientation, the color of your skin, your cast. Music does not care about all that. Now, pop quiz. Who recognizes this song? Okay, now, who recognizes this song? Right, so these two songs have been penned by the same person, James Brown. The first track went on to become his highest charting song on the billboard. The second song turned out to be the unofficial anthem of the Black Power Movement. So, as you can see, music has been long been wielded as a powerful medium to fight social injustices, societal hierarchy, and, of course, spread the message of unity and peace. Now, when it comes to hip-hop, hip-hop is the single most powerful art movement that has ever existed, that has come out of the African-American communities, the Latino communities, and the Caribbean-American communities. And it has gone on to become a worldwide phenomenon to the point where we imitate, emulate their art, style, speech, ways of self-expression through beats and rhymes. Gangster rap, which originated as an underground art form, was created in order to expose the critical issues 
that plagued black communities. Most importantly, police brutality. The finest example here being NWA and Dr. Dre. We have 20-year-old folk artist Jenny Mahi, who is influenced by rap and hip-hop, has gone to achieve notoriety with viral hits such as Fan Baba Sahib Di, I'm a fan of Baba Sahib, and Danger Chamar, a casteist slur which he flipped into an anthem of empowerment. And then we have Bunt Singh, a Sikh agricultural laborer who was brutally attacked by seven men and was left in amputee, all because he sought justice for the rape of his minor daughter. He went on to become a legendary Dalit icon who went on to sing songs of rebellion tackling caste-based violence. And finally, we have the Castless Collective, a Chennai-based folk band specializing in Ghana music, which is folk music style that has originated from the streets of North Chennai. They use their music to annihilate the idea of caste and bring about unity through powerful storytelling. So, what is my purpose in all of this? We come across the news of lynchings, murders, and rapes of people who belong to the so-called lower castes. And no matter how many times you and I rant on social media about this, we know for a fact that the publicity surrounding this will die down in a few days. And the truth is that there's a whole new generation that will have to live and endure this reality. Having faced instances of discrimination myself based on the color of my skin and also being stereotyped because of the way I look, my entire appearance, this has had an effect on my mental health. But I can't even begin to explain the magnitude of suffering endured by those who are on the receiving end of regular caste-based injustices. Now, all that I'm saying is, what if the next generation of kids were provided the resources to discover a new skill, to understand who they are, understand what meaning of self-worth, understand the meaning of self-expression, and eventually go on to challenge outdated ideologies through music? Because, to be honest, technology has leveled the playing field. In this day and age, making music is not a rich kid's game anymore. You can literally make music right off your cell phone or on your laptop while on the go and publish your work instantly, right? So what I want to say is music definitely empowers, transforms, saves, and liberates. Now, I have a small performance piece for y'all. This is about me finding my identity in music and every single sound that has been used in this song has played a role into making this whole. There is rhythm, harmony and flow, all of these qualities that, you know, a society needs to function smoothly. So. Why am I being treated differently from everyone? What have I done? I've been punished, I've been shunned, undermined, overlooked, had my confidence shook. It's what it took to help me realize that the road to emancipation comes with a price. I visualized in my mind's eye that my music and words will have me recognized. I visualized in my mind's eye that my self-worth will never be compromised. I visualized in my mind's eye that the revolution will be televised. From pen to paper, focus like laser, dreams to fruition, I got no room for haters. I'll speak my truth, try to the speakers, I'll follow my purpose, follow the leader. I've got no reservations, I've got no reservations, so I'll tell you how I'm feeling. I've got no reservations, my words will echo from the floor to the ceiling. I've got no reservations, I've got no reservations, I'll tell you how I'm feeling. I've got no reservations, my words will echo from the floor to the ceiling.
Music can be used as a powerful tool to start a conversation, start a dialogue, and eventually start a movement. I'm Rakshit Ashok, rock out to most, artist, liberated. Thank you.